So now that we've seen what frequency distributions are, and we've seen some variations on them, and we've talked a little bit about how to interpret the data in them, our next step is going to be taking data sets and actually creating uh, these different kinds of distributions. So when you're looking at qualitative data, right, like these test crates, and you have a relatively small number of values, right, A, B, C, D, and F, just five, we can create the distribution by just recording every value in the gray column. I'll do A, B, C, D, and F. And then I'm putting the counts in the frequency column. So when I'm doing something like this, I like to actually just cross off the values as I enter them. Uh, that helps to make sure I don't accidentally count a value twice or that I don't accidentally miss a value. So I'm going to do the A's first. There's one, and I think that's it, one A. Then I'll do the B's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. Then the C's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got uh, just the one D. And for the F's, there's one, two, three, four, five. And there's my, there's my frequency distribution. And I can do a quick check. Right, I can do a quick check by totaling the frequencies. If I add all of these up, it comes out to 24. And there are 24 values in the data set. Right? So I'm feeling pretty good about my results. Okay, so the situation for dealing with quantitative data can be a little, a little more involved. Now, I've outlined the steps here. All right, so first, you need to select the number of classes. Now, you, you don't want to go too small or you'll end up splitting the data in just you know, halves or thirds, just two or three classes, which isn't detailed enough to let you see trends. But if you go too large, you'll have a bunch of classes that I'll have just one or two. So usually something between 5 and 20 is going to be reasonable. Right, so to determine the class width, you just divide the width of the data, that's the maximum value minus the minimum one, um, and you divide that evenly into however many classes you chose. Right, so the safest choice for the first lower class limit is going to be the smallest data value. Right, but sometimes you can round down to make the results nicer, for example, rounding 3.1 down to 3, but remember, you have to round down or your first class may not include the smallest data value. And if you round too far, your last data class may not include the highest value. So you have to be really careful when you're doing that. And in the end, uh, you may get to that last class and realize ah, my class ended too early. I, I, I don't have a space for my last value. You may have to go back and adjust, right? So safest approach, start with the minimum value. So then to get the lower limits of the other classes, just add that class width to your first limit over and over again. And then to get the upper class limits, if you're dealing with integer data, you can just subtract one from the next class's lower limit. And if you're dealing with decimal data, you can subtract 0 0.1, 0 0.01, or some other small number, right? Usually kind of below the level of accuracy of your data. So if your data goes out, to two decimal points, for example, I would subtract 0 0.001, right? A, 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 with the, that is a three decimal digit number, uh, and that'll give me my upper class, my first upper class limit. So then to get the the rest of them, right? To get the rest of the upper bounds, again, just add the class width over and over again. All right. So once you've got those. Uh, those classes, then just like we saw on the previous example, uh, it's just a question of counting the number of data values that fall into each one. All right, so that there, there was a lot going on there. All right, so let's, let's see how this works. I'm going to create a frequency distribution, and I'm going to do this with five classes. Right, so I've got five rows in my table here. So if you like, right, you can pause the presentation now uh, and work this out yourself, then come back and see how I do it. All right, well, if you look closely, you'll see that the data is already sorted. So the class width, right, class width, 
will be 49 minus 10. Right, that's the maximum value minus the minimum value divided by 5. That's our, uh, that's our number of classes. So that's going to be 7.8. Now, if you use 7.8, that's fine. Right, I'm going to round this up to 8. Right, so that's going to make the classes easier to interpret. Integers are generally going to be easier to work with than the strange decimal groups like 14.5 to 15.2, right? So uh, this also makes sense to do in this case since all of our data values are integers. So let's see, 10 is the smallest data value, and that's a reasonable starting point for our first class. And then let's see, that's going to make the remaining lower class limits. I'm going to add the class width. I'm going to add 8 over and over again. That'll be 18, 26, 34, and 18, 26, 34, and 42. Right. And for the upper limits, I'll use one less than the next class's lower limit. So the first class will end at 17, right? That's 18 minus 1. The next class will be 25. That's 26 minus 1. Or, remember, these all have to differ by the class width. So you could uh, just keep adding 8. 25 plus 8 is 33. 33 plus 8 is 41. 41 plus 8 is 49. All right, now here's a point where you got to do a quick check, right? Um, make sure, uh, especially if you did any rounding, right? Make sure that the highest data value has a class that it will fit into. 49 will fit into that class. So we're okay, right? Our classes are going to work. So now I'm just going to go and count the values, right? I need numbers between 10 and 17. There's one, two, three, four of them. 18 and 25, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. 26 and 33, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 34 and 41, there's one, two, three. And then 42 to 49, there's four in that last group, All right? And once again, right, we can do the same, same check here. If I add all of those numbers up, um, 10, 20, yes, it comes out to 24. And again, there are 24 values in my data set. So I'm feeling good that I didn't mess anything up. Okay, so in the next series of lectures, uh, we're going to go a step further in summarizing a data set and see how we can, how we can summarize uh, one visually in things like charts and graphs. Right? We're going to talk about not just how to create graphs, uh, but about the strengths and weaknesses of the different types and the circumstances where each different type of graph would be an appropriate choice.